I visited my trans doctor today for my pre-op surgery uh, appointment, which it's my top surgery has been in the works for a couple of years now. And I was able to schedule a date in for June. I had wanted a date for June because my mom's a teacher, so then um, I can be sick and need help and like my partner doesn't have to shoulder all of the weight. My mom's home full time during that week and for the whole freaking summer because her, her life's like that. Uh, so I had the pre-op appointment today to prep me for that and to get everything done. I wasn't really sure what to expect from this appointment, so I thought it might be helpful, helpful to bring it up. So um, I'm doing my surgery and all of my trans health care is through Johns Hopkins. I live in South Central Pennsylvania, so it's literally like an hour, 45 minutes away from me. Um, it's also a very, a very good uh, trans health care clinic and a very good like medical facility period but I've had really good, i had a really good experience with the Johns Hopkins team, particularly about my trans healthcare. And so I'd been with them, I think this is my third year on testosterone, like hormone therapy. So I'd been with them through the hormone therapy and then we had discussed surgery afterward. Um, and so I was, referenced to the in-house Hopkins surgeon and we scheduled an appointment to go over what the surgery was. That was the first appointment I ever had with the surgeon. So because I was in system, I got to essentially get to the appointment with the surgeon right away. There is like an appointment before that if you've never been through Hopkins before kind of just going over paperwork, I'm assuming, and going over the whole process. But I was able to skip that because I had had it with my hormone therapy. So I got in to meet with a surgeon in February and she went over the surgery. She checked out my chest, made sure that everything seemed good to go. We set up a date for late June. And so now, May 31st, I just had my pre-op appointment, which I had, I like had straight up no idea what needed to be discussed at this appointment. Essentially, it was me speaking with the anesthesiologist and getting blood work done. One of the, I wish that people <laughs> explained more that being trans kind of means that you get your blood drawn like a fuck ton, like a lot. Especially like with hormone therapy, like the first year of my hormone therapy, I was getting like nine vials of blood drawn, like a complete blood panel, like every like three months. Now it's really like only every, like once a year, but like for real, like every three months. So like, I'm like acutely aware of whatever this, whatever you can learn from a blood draw. I'm, I'm acutely aware of, of my stats. So, um, I had my blood drawn again, no surprise. They wanted to make sure that I wasn't pregnant, which would have been a surprise as I've never slept with someone with a penis before. But there's always that fear that or there's always the Virgin Mary fear. This is what being raised Catholic does to you. Now I'm afraid that I can just randomly get pregnant by God. I wasn't, I'm not pregnant. Ooh. Um, but yeah, for the most part, the appointment was just me speaking with the anesthesiologist and we were going over a bunch of my medical family history, a bunch of my personal history, like if, you know, I've ever had shortness of breath, if I've ever had sleep apnea, like if I've ever had a heart issue, like really like broad things like that. Um, I'm redheaded. My dad's also redheaded. And a fun thing about people with the ginger gene is that they're less susceptible to anesthetic. So that was something we had to discuss. I mean, he already knew that, but, but I discussed how it affected my dad in the past and how it had affected me in the past and just to be aware of it. Um, and then 
we went through that whole process. They explained where I go on the day, who I can bring on the day, what I need to eat before surgery and stuff like that. Um, what kind of clothes to pack. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I wish that people, I think, I guess, I think it's funny when people bring up, um, when people complain about trans health care and fight legislation to protect trans health care, they bring up all of these arguments that implies a, a large amount of speed that I've never experienced. Now, I'm sure that you can make the process go much faster than I did. I'm, I'm sure that you can like speed run the trans experience. And I, I think we've seen that in media too. But at least from like my perspective, from the point where I started experiencing gender issues and recognizing that it was a, a gender issue, to the point where I am now, it's it's been like ten years. So in in my head, while I suppose it's only been three years of like active treatment, it's still been ten years of self discovery, ten years of landing on who I am and staying with it for once again years to now, like even within my healthcare system, and I'm sure I could have pushed for surgery sooner, but even within my healthcare system, there was a process of, um, like they spoke with me about it. They spoke with me about my experience. They assessed my gender dysphoria. Um, I spoke with a psychologist. I spoke with counselors. Like there was a whole process before I was given anything. And I can only assume if they're willing to do that, or if they need to do that with a 24-year-old, then with children, it's, it's much more stark. I guess I'm just <laughs> from the other end of the spectrum, of people looking in on this and being really shocked by how severe the, the transition is and, and how fast it can go. I think it's funny because from my perspective, it's taken so long to get here. It, it, because remember, like from, from my perspective, this is, this is years and years of low level pain, psychological pain every day. And the thought of that going away Obviously not, you know, depression and everything else, but that small piece going away is wild. It's wild to think about. It's it's really liberating. It's wonderful that I can have the opportunity to do this, not just financially, but like My dear friend at work, her husband had open heart surgery last month and I've been helping her through it and helping him through it. And I've learned so much just being more hands on with the situation. Um, so much that I never really thought about, about the recovery, about the process, about, about all of that. Like, you know, in your head that it's scary, but then to see it and to see the effect it has on everyone around them is, is a different experience. So like, I, ju I guess I just wish that people would 
be a little bit more open and a little bit more open hearted about things that they don't know firsthand. You know what I mean? Like, like, I guess treat people with grace when you don't really know. Like, it, it's okay to not really know. Um, and it's far better to just admit that than to than to be cruel to somebody and inadvertently harm them. So my partner has been getting kind of anxious. Right now, I think the main anxiety is just what kind of physicality I'll have after the first week of surgery. So after I get my drains out and all of the binding out and I can start going back to work, um, she just wants to I guess she she's anxious because like we've got yard work and we've got housework and um, we're usually pretty even about how work is distributed between us. And I just want to make sure that she doesn't have to get stressed out taking care of me, also taking care of the house. And we've discussed that as well. Like, you know, it's it's fine if the house is a little bit messy, like it, it'll be it will survive a month with the house being a little bit different than it usually is. Um, but I know it's going to bother her. So that's really the main anxiety is I want to make sure that I think for my own mental health as as well as the health of our home, um, I want to make sure that I can be up and moving as soon as possible, like as soon as it's safe. But that's really the only fear right now. I'm like ready to go. I don't feel any anxiety so far. Like I feel anxiety of after the fact Um, as I said, like healing wise, but like, I do not feel anxiety about this surgery. As far as I'm concerned, I am going to sleep. And then when I wake up, it'll be fine. Like, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like, I don't like all of the anxiety, the, the hours of waiting, the, all of that shit is, is really put on by mom and my partner. So (laughs) I'm like, I don't have anything to worry about. I'm in great hands. My surgeon went to Harvard. Like I'm okay. (laughs) It's, It's my mom and M who won't be able to sit still in this waiting room for a couple of hours. So, um, but yeah, this is countdown to top surgery. I've got like 19 days to go and then, and then I'm home free, I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm that excited, but I'm excited to take y'all along.